Hi, I'm Suzanne, and thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to do a posthumous portrait of a beautiful husky mix named Bear. Now, Bear was the very special dog uh, to, to his people, and my client who is having this painting done for a friend um, described Bear to me. And having a client describe the subject of a posthumous portrait is very important to me because I get to feel like I know this subject a little bit better. And whether it's a human or an animal, I still want to know who I'm painting. And so Bear sounded like he was in a marvelous, marvelous dog. And he was described as a heart dog uh, to, his, to his people. So I want to be able to do Bear uh, justice and honor his family with this portrait. So again, thank you so much for joining me. And if you are my subscribers, thanks so much. And if not, consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in to Bear's portrait. Our starting lineup of our paint today for the portrait of Bear is I've got manganese violet, king's blue, ultramarine blue, ivory black, titanium white, yellow ochre, burnt umber, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, and ash rose. These are the colors I'm gonna start off with. Um, as far as my brushes, I've because this is a small piece, this painting is only a six by six by two, so it's almost considered a miniature. And so I'm, I've got one of my really tiny brushes out. This is the um, number zero um, rosemary pointed red dot, okay? This is a number five long filbert series 278. I have an eye, this is a number three ivory um, filbert. I've got a number four um, eclipse long filbert. I have a number one Eclipse Long Filbert, and I have a pointed round, which is a Shiraz. So you can see these brushes are not huge. There's my hand for reference. Not, a, not big brushes since our substrate is actually quite small. So let's go ahead and get started in Bear's portrait. All right, here's our setup for today. Um, this is a six by six gessoed panel. Well, it's not really gessoed. It's actually been gessoed and I have a coat, um, actually two coats of acrylic paint. Now, the green paint that you see isn't necessarily what the background color is gonna be. It's just what I had and I like to use these. And this is just, you know, you can see it's a wood birch panel. Um, and it helps with keeping the paint not, you know, being sucked into the wood so much. The, the acrylic just gives it a little bit of a barrier. Here you can see the reference we have of Bear that we're using for today's uh, painting and uh, in all, all our paints. So um, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into this little piece. Now, I'm gonna just start in by just blocking everything in and I'm gonna start mixing some colors. I'm gonna start with my light color, believe it or not. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of the um, titanium white and um, yellow ochre. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cool it down just a little bit with the ash rose. And I'm going to kind of suggest where all his light points are gonna go. But, um, okay, I'm gonna make a color for his tongue. And uh, of course that ash 
rose is a great color. Mixing a little bit of alizarin crimson. Um, sometimes I put just a tad bit of, of um, burnt sienna, and I'm gonna put a little bit of white off to the side and just mix that in there a little bit. So you can see I'm mixing that. I'm gonna put in where I think his tongue's going. Um, right up to the top. tongue is and it's very dark inside here so I'm going to take a little bit of that take a little bit of the manganese violet and just kind of go up inside his mouth here and it's still not quite dark enough I'm going to grab some of that black yeah that's what I'm talking about mouth of a dog Just soften that up it'll all get softened up later his nose is an unusual color um, Bayer from what I'm told was part husky and uh, you can see he's got the one blue eye but he's got a very interesting colored nose and I'm using again I'm gonna use the uh, this uh, ash rose which is a really interesting color um, Ash Rose is one of the, what color? Oh my gosh, hang on, I'll, I'll get it for you if I don't. It's, um, who makes my Ash Rose? Goodness gracious, I've used it a million times in some of these other videos. It's, um, a, it's a Charvine paint, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna put some pink in the ears. Take that same color we were just using bit of umber in it, a little bit of this ash rose, a little bit of burnt sienna, and I'm going to suggest the inside of his ears over here is just a little bit pink. Now let's put in a little dark value. So I'm using, the, still using the number three ivory filbert, and I'm using ivory black and a little bit of um, ultramarine blue in the mixture here and because I am painting on top of the vine charcoal it does give it a chalky appearance that's that that really is happening there but you'll see it'll work out and um, in the areas where I see some grays or cool um, lighter lighter values I'm at mixing a little bit of King's blue into the paint that seems to really do a good job with pulling it all together and you can see the light highlight on the top of the head a little bit more King's blue King's Blue is an awesome color, y'all. You need If you don't have it in your box of tricks, you need to get some. I'm gonna opt to go with a lighter background. Um, so I'm mixing yellow ochre, titanium white, and I wanna, I want this to be more of a grayish beige. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of the purple to knock down the yellow, to gray it down. And it's probably not enough yellow. I mean, enough of the purple to really do that for me. Yeah, it's knocking it down. I could use a little bit of the, Ash Rose too. Oh yeah, that's good. Ash Rose is becoming like my new favorite today. Yeah, that's a pretty good color. I still want it to be... It's coming. I'm getting closer to the color I want. I want it to be a neutral. I want it to be a neutral but light background. Because I want his black hair to look great when I get pulled into it.
I'm using a number four pointed round. It's an Eclipse pointed round, and I, I, like I said earlier, I'm really wanting to work in this area. I think I'm going to do a very ref suggested. I'm just going to keep it really tiny like that. You know, some some artists go with just like a mark and <laughs> Maybe I should consider just going with a little mark. Now that I've got paint on all surfaces, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get out my little tiny brush. You know how I love these little brushes now. This is the red dot. It's a zero, and it's one of the uh, work, I think it's called the Workbench series of Rosemary. Um, very affordable, great little brushes. And I'm just going in here and putting little hairs in. Now remember folks, this piece happens to be a six by six. It's not a very big piece. So yeah, little brushes like this really do come in handy. And you can see I'll put the load of paint right on the very tip and let the tip of the brush do the work. So I'm trying to get in a lot of the little nuances and the details while I'm still working that wet paint on the side. And I just grabbed um, a number four pointed round Shiraz brush. And this is a great little workhorse brush. It really does the trick. I have been known to do an entire piece using this very same brush. So I am uh, just wanting to work the edges to keep the soft edges. And uh, I gotta do it while I have a wet background. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just getting in all the, doing everything that I can just to, to I didn't really work that wet paint.
and I think you're getting a feel of how I will work and layer my paint. And since I've basically have, am getting my uh, mid-tone and some of the darker values in, here I am laying in some of the lighter ones on top. And sometimes I'll go a little more, bit more impasto or thicker with my paint when I'm laying in the lights like this because, you know, I'll blend them in, um, but it helps me see the structure. It really does, um, the structure of the actual dog's um, facial features, his skull. So, and, and, and I'm rolling the edges of my brush to create that fur on the side of his face and, you know, just kind of laying it in. It's, it is a building process. Now, I did grab a little bit of Yellow Lake. You see that little dollop of yellow paint there on the side because I needed a bit warmer, um, a warmer, lighter um, value to do some of the, the lighter hairs on his face and the you know the yellow ochre just wasn't just wasn't enough um i needed it to be warmer so i grabbed the yellow lake by michael harding threw it down and you could see it really does brighten up his hair and still using that little it's a zero um it's a red dot which is a synthetic sable and I, you know when i'm starting to get into doing the eyes and looking at the structure um, you'll see that I'll often hold my brush up to my um, uh, painting to make sure my angles are correct. Now, I did opt to twi tist just tilt his head just a little bit, so I've got to make sure that his eyes and his nostrils and everything aligns properly. And, yeah, just laying in some more of the lighter values, and you can see how much thicker some of that paint is as I'm laying it in. But he's starting to come together. I am starting to see Bear come alive. This kind of goes here and it comes down but then there's all this other you know like lids and stuff okay everything looks like it's where it needs to be this eye is gonna be a little bit easier I'm think I'm just gonna jump in now he's got one blue eye that husky parts kind of coming out mr. bear here so I am doing the lightest version of the color and I'm using King's blue titanium white and I see this kind of almost like a just like that yeah that looks pretty good now the in top part inside part Looks like it's got quite a bit of, um, I'm taking a little tiny bit of the old, I mean, uh, ultramarine blue and a little, just a dab of ivory black. And I'm going on the inside of the eye here, closer to where the pupil's gonna be. And I'm just kind of hitting that edge just a little bit. I picked up a fluff. Put a little bit more of that color in. I'm just going to take it straight on. Folks, it's getting close to lunchtime, I can tell. Now, for any of my uh, YouTube and Patreon people that are interested, I am having this time. Now, my last, my pet portrait, um, workshop that I was going to do in uh, at the Booth Museum got canceled with COVID and just the lack of people signing, you know, people actually start when the Omicron came around, it pretty much scared people off. And uh, so I didn't get to do that workshop, but I have another one coming up, which will be May 27th through 27th, 28th, and 29th. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It happens to be Memorial Day weekend, 
but it's, um, it'll be fun. It will be here in Kingsport, Tennessee. So I'm able to do this workshop. I have to bring this up a little bit more. I will be able to do this workshop at a reduced rate because I won't have the travel expenses that I normally have when I take do a workshop. So the price for the workshop will be $320 for three days. That's from nine to four o'clock. And if you've, if you, my students can attest to this, um, that's a really good deal. Okay, we're putting that little bit of light in there. I'm just using the same color light. I'll, I'll refine it a little bit more, but I'm gonna go ahead and work around that eye here. This is where I wanna go ahead and, this is where having a iPad sure does make things a lot easier because it allows me to zoom in. Now I'm using a little bit of this brown and I really think I need some green in this brown. And I keep mixing my green. Let's see, I'll just take, there we go. I'm taking um, just a little bit of that um, yellow lake and ultramarine blue. And I just made, um, and I added a little bit of my burnt umber to it. And I made just this kind of interesting, weird color, but I am coming into here and just working this into the yellow. Everything's lining up exactly the way it's supposed to. And this little brush is really handy. eyelid this is going to be refined but you'll watch it it's going to be it'll be all nice and and I'm, I'm using this little bit of the green because it becomes the cooler value of my yellow it'll it, it, it sounds like a strange color to use but people out and about today. There's a grandpa outside with his little grandson and he's watching us paint today. So you thought you were you're alone today watching me paint. All right, I see some stuff I gotta do right away. I've got to bring in this eye up a little bit. That's the eyelid, the bottom lid. And it kind of comes down like that. Now the, the same token came down on that side, it comes up on this side. There we go. Feel a little bit better. Gotta get some of that purple that I like over here. See quite a bit of that in here. Whoops, a little, a little too much. See, this is the, this is what's so important in any of these portraits. Um, you gotta get the um, the reflections and the the light and the eyes and everything just so because, like I said, oftentimes this is all they have to remember of their their pets, and it has to be right. And 
it goes all the way up and that light shine is. And I may, you know, like I said, I'll go back and forth and back and forth, but oops, it's lunchtime. Just having that one little eye peeking out at me uh, while I paint makes, you know, makes bear come alive for me. So I'm using that same small red dot brush and just doing some of the, the detail in his mouth and his teeth area. And I'm still trying to figure some of this out. So I'll, you'll see how I just kind of move around here, putting in some of the darker values, creating his chin, um, dropping down his jaw. All that is happening, even with this little brush. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I, I can start to see his smile, right? Um, and it's actually coming into focus here. Just doing some of the little details in his mouth area. And again, this brush is really doing the trick. Still using the, the zero red dot. And I actually just switched to a long Eclipse Filbert. Probably, eh, it's probably a number two. And uh, yeah, so I'm just laying in some of the hair around his face and, you know, you know, I, I will stack my color. So I generally use my lighter color last, but you know, I go back and forth a little bit too. And um, yeah, so he, you can see that uh, this, this sweet dog is just really coming into focus.
So he's got a lot of his other structure, eye structure showing on this side, like his lids and the structure of the actual eye. I'm going to put in, it's got an interesting color. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on my, my picture. He's got the one blue eye, yes, but the brown eye is actually an interesting color because I'm gonna go in the middle of it with a little burnt sienna. Oops, a little too much. And then there is a light, it's kind of the color we've been using, light gold area. And I'll have to look at his eyes. In this, in this particular picture, he's got this light gold area. And I'm gonna go ahead and put his black pupil in down here because he's got a lot of shine in this eye. And his shine, I'm gonna go in with, I'm cleaning this brush just straight, um, King's Blue. And it's, This eye is not blue. That's just the shine. And it's he doesn't have quite as much shine or auto, you know visible shine in his blue eye. Um, I'm gonna put. I've got this little brush. There's that structure, and then there's another structure. There's all kinds of stuff going on in this eye, and I've got to figure it out. And I'm sure his mama would know if I got this wrong. So you got to make sure it's right. Okay, I'm gonna take some brown and I've got, like I said, I have a lot of this built out. I mean, my, I have my reference zoomed out so I can really see. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of blackish brown here. It's not working. Come on, Sue. So I'm taking um, a little uh, ivory black and uh, it's ivory black and burnt umber. Right, he's starting to look right now. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of that <clears throat> this pinky color. What is it? Um, Terra Rose. And there's two structures. This is his bottom lid. Um, actually, it comes to here. There's actually a little bit of a. I don't know if it's his, I don't think it's his sclera. Uh, I'm not sure where it is. I'm just gonna do as I see it. There's a little bit stronger dark area here. Stronger dark area on this side. I always have to steady my hand a little bit. This is where if you have a mall stick, might come in handy. But I can't really use one when I'm when I'm doing videoing because then you won't see what I'm doing. 
So I'm coming up from behind underneath it. I got this a little bit intense. Going in with it almost, it's just a light, light gold. Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. I'll feel good when I leave today, um, like I've left the piece in a good spot. Um, you know, I could come in tomorrow and go, what was I thinking? Now there's kind of a light area in here. I have to, I'm gonna darken it up with, this is, this is darker than what, you know, there's a lot of uh, darker areas that's in around the eye. I'm just, I'm gonna let it lightly blend. I'm trying to wipe most of it off on my brush. It's not. Try to get this kind of same here. You know, they, there's this eyelid. I will put a little bit more of this shine in this other eye. the eye that we have here. Um, I want to bring out his darker blue on this side just a little bit more. Makes it a little bit more appealing. Give it a little bit more. There we go. This is here. here. A little bit more of the burnt sienna. <laughs> this dog. I feel like once I start getting the eyes in, I feel like they're starting to really come come alive here. And I told my client that well, one of the nice things is um, her friend will be able to watch this this video and uh, watch how I was able to do this. I wish that I could bring a uh, bear back for her. And this is as close as I can come. <laughs> um, I explained, I said, and he just recently passed. The dog just died recently. And um, the time when my dog, Phoebe, died, that before I got Singer, was a miserable time. Um, and I'm not saying that everybody should just rush out and get another dog after their dog dies. I'm not even suggesting that at all because you'll never replace the dog that you lost, but you get to f hopefully um, occupy the hole that they left. <laughs> that makes sense. And 
There we go. There's that little. Um, and it was miserable when Singer wasn't, I mean, when, uh, after Phoebe died, just not having her around just was so hard. I'm bringing this eye, just a little of this. What you can't tell is this is actually really intense blue on the inside. This is not a big black spot here in the middle where the pupil is. Around the pupil, it's like there's this, just a, a very clear blue. It's very hard. It's very hard to really appreciate what you're seeing. And so this is down here. Oops, sorry about that. My glasses hit that. There we go. Keep saying there we go because it helps me. <laughs> Whether I'm going anywhere or not. There's a slight uh, purpley color right in here. We're just that the skin in this area. It's not quite that. Just like I'm just gonna bring this down Put a little bit more. I'm gonna make it a little purplier. There we go. Let's bring this down a little bit. Yeah. Hello, bear. Sorry, I know it's weird, but I do sometimes talk to my paintings. I do ask, I like to ask my clients a little bit, since I'm obviously never gonna get to meet bear, okay? And a lot of I, what I pick up on an animal's personality is when I meet them and I won't get to meet Bear. And um, let's see, I don't quite have this right. Let's bring this color up a little bit. But I do ask my clients, can you tell me a little bit about them? What were they like? It helps me to imagine. So when I'm looking at their eyes here, I'm able to kind of gather a little bit, maybe what Bear might have been like. So I'm gonna bring this up just a tad.
So I'm getting the little bit of detail in on the eye and I'm going back and forth between my two um, my reference here trying to get get it in the detail so today I'm just gonna wrap up the painting by putting in all the detail that I didn't get it you know yesterday hard to see but there's just a, a slightly light area right there I'm just gonna So I'm just looking for little color shifts and differences in
Now I, you can tell I'm getting close to the end. I'm I'm putting in a little bit of I'm, I'm adding some warmer warmer values or warmer um, paint and lighter values as I as I move through the piece and just getting the last little bit of detail. And you can see how much more impasto I am with my really light values. Um, and it does it just creates that structure that I need and helps me see it but those eyes now I have to say that the left eye was a little bit more difficult because being that it was the brown eye I could see all the structures where the the lid seemed to be a little bit deeper or bigger and I'm just going by my reference that I'm looking at so I I, I keep going back and adding more detail to the eyes because um, in my opinion, that's where the fun's at. And not only that, the fact that Bear did have one blue eye and one brown eye does make him kind of a, a unique little character. But um, I do have to keep going back and forth with these eyes because, you know, they've got to be exactly right. They just have to be exactly right. So that's why you say, you know, just when you think I've got them finished, no, nope, they're not done yet. So I keep going back to them. Now, you know, getting the structure of his nose, the photo reference that I worked from mainly, his nose is an odd color. Um, and and it's light for a dark, for for this type of dog. Um, so I, I went, moved around quite a bit with his nose here. I did use that Dusty Rose a lot. And I'm showing you the, the, the little brush that I'm using. And of course, I'm using the number one uh, red dot. And, um, and it's getting in there and doing the trick. It's really getting in there. And, you know, I, I, I will constantly hold that brush up, um, whether I did it at this point or not. I, I am always checking my angles. I've got to make sure the nostrils line up with the eyes and et cetera, et cetera. And so if I, if I seem puzzled sometimes when I'm working and, and I'm trying to figure it out, I'll often stop and just look and check the angles. Now you can see really, now you really kind of feel of how thick some of the paint is on his face. And it does really create that texture and that fullness that gives his fur this life. Now, here I am putting the, some of the last little bit of little, you know, detailed hairs that you see in his ears. And I do switch to a um, evergreen um, dagger brush. And that, you know how I love my daggers. It just is the best way to create the fur. And he does have these light hairs. Now, I don't, I'm not really certain. <laughs> you know, he, his coloration, and I'm going by the reference. So he does have these light hairs that, have, that are behind him. But you'll see, even though they look like I just kind of stuck them willy-nilly, as I put the dark value around the ear, now they recess and go behind him. And that was really the look that I was going for. So I have to lay some of the dark hairs on top of the light hairs. And that creates the order in which the hairs fall on this dog's body. But he's coming together. And I am loving every minute of this painting. It's really, really been fun. Okay. I flipped the piece. Now that took some doing because the sides are wet. Um, but what I'm wanting to do, because my hand works better in a, in a certain direction, I am trying to get some of these, these hairs, these light hairs. And this looks white, but it's really not exactly white. Um, I'm putting in all the light hairs that go in behind the dog. And so I'm just moving through and getting this in. And, you know, again, just like I did on the other side, I will put in the dark hairs over it and it'll all pull together. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the process of watching this painting. And if you did, you know, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions whatsoever um, through the process um, by watching this video, just let me know. Leave it in the comment section. I'll get to you and I'll, I'll explain everything that I've done here. Um, yeah, so I'm just working through the top of the hair, hairs here and I'm working that little dagger brush to its best <laughs> best ability. And, uh, and this is why these brushes are just so invaluable. It creates that hair that I need inside of his ears. And I, you know, obviously flipped over the canvas again to get, you know, the better angle here. Now I do mix a color here inside the ear. It looked like I lost some of the depth and it's, a, it's basically a shade of... Um, 
yellow ochre. So I just took, I mixed a little ivory black and yellow ochre together to make that dark value that's inside the ears, but I'll put hair back over it. Um, but yes, I am using that dagger brush all over, putting in some more hair, but I'm nearing the end of this piece and have thoroughly enjoyed the whole process. And, um, and I, I really do feel like I've gotten to know Bear just a little bit. And I hope that this painting brings his, uh, his, his special people joy. It's funny. I, as I move through it, it's, I'm watching it as I'm, I'm, I'm talking here. I'm watching the video. I'm doing this voiceover. And I'm seeing how my brain is working because I see that the side of his face was a little bit off over here and added a whole section. <laughs> um, and just brought it out a little bit more. And, uh, yeah. So it's, he's almost done. I can see that this is almost complete. And, again, this was a lot of fun.
And with the last little bit, I am just using that um, that little zero red dot brush to do the last little little tiny bits of value and just making whatever corrections I can that I might see. And uh, yeah, I can, you know I keep checking my reference to make sure we're good. And it looks like we are about to wrap it up, folks. Um, this has been fun, and it's you know I, of course every time I say it's okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I always find something, you know, just a little something. But uh, yeah, I think now I am done. And here is the finished piece. Now I did pop quite a little bit of blue in there, um, but I just really enjoyed that. And you can really see the detail in the ears, the eyes, the muzzle area, all of it. And it was all a lot of fun. And we're done. So you can see, um, I'm going to go ahead and show the actual reference and the painting. And you can see there's a little difference. I did work from a couple different references and I'll show you over here. There was a few references that I used. And, um, you know, I, I would show my client along the way how I was progressing with the piece. And it wasn't her dog, but her friend's dog. And so, you know, she was able to say, you know, that eye is really blue. Make sure we get that eye looking blue or, one of the things that she described to me when I asked what color background they wanted, she said her, when her, she asked her friend, what's your favorite color? What co she says, I like the color of sleep, which I think is a wonderful description, but she said blue makes her think of, of bear. So I did include quite a little, little sparks of blue all through the background. I didn't paint him on a blue background because it really wasn't going to, um, uh, complement the painting in my opinion as well as it could but I did include quite a bit of blue so that's how we arrive at certain colors and and things throughout a painting so there you have it I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did thank you so much give me a thumbs up if you have any questions about anything I covered in today's video leave it in the comment section and I'll get to you. And I do want to remind you that I will be having a painting workshop. It's a wildlife painting workshop, three days. And it's May 27th, 28th, and 29th here in my hometown of Kingsport, Tennessee. It's uh, hopefully it's not too far for you. You can travel in. We've got a lot of times folks come from a long ways to come to these workshops. So I hope I get to see you guys. Um, I'll leave a lot of the information in the comment section below. And uh, maybe you'll, you'll want to consider coming to the workshop. And again, one of the perks of my workshop is I paint along with you, and so we're painting together. So I'll have two demos that I will be giving away to uh, two lucky recipients um, uh, attending the, the, um, the workshop. So it's a, it's, a, it's a fun way to acquire some original artwork. And uh, so there. I hope you get to come and I hope you consider the workshop. It'll be a good time. And again, I want to extend my thanks uh, for joining me and um, that's it. Hey, you guys are awesome. So thanks so much. And from Kingsport, Tennessee, I want to say thank you and I'll see you. Bye.